This is the second lecture on Analysis 1, and it's on ordered fields. Now, say we have K as an ordered field, and S is a subset of K. Now, it doesn't have to be equal to K. And we have A and B as elements of K. Now, A is known as a lower bound if it is less than or equal to all the values in S. Now this is the same for anything less than A. So that any A or anything less than A is known as a lower bound if it is less than or equal to all the values in S. And this is similar for an upper bound, which we're calling B. So B or anything more is known as an upper bound if it is greater than or equal to all the values in S. And if it is both, a, if, if a set has both a lower bound and an upper bound, it is known to be bounded. So a quick example. We have A and B as elements of K, and A is less than B. And we have the set S, which has elements such that they're bigger than A and less than B. Now what we can tell about this is that it has a lower bound of a or anything less than A, and an upper bound of B or anything greater than B, so it is known as to be bounded. We have another example here where we have A is an element of K and the set S, such that all the elements of K are greater than A. So, what we can tell about this is that it has a lower bound of A or anything less than A but it does not have an upper bound because x can be anything up there. So this is known to be not bounded. Here we also have similar, and the b is an element of k, such that all the elements are less than b. Now from this we can tell that b, or anything greater, is the upper bound. But it is not bounded because it does not have a lower bound. Right. A set can have a maximal and a minimal element if it is included in the set. So we have A is an element of S, and if A is less than or equal to, it has to be in the set of S. And we express this as A is the minimal, so put min, of S. This is the same for B. If B is in the set, if it's an actual number in the set, and it's also greater than or equal to in every, every number in the set, then it is the maximal. So we have B equals the maximal of S. Now, the good thing about the minimal and maximal elements is that they are unique from each other. Now we have a quick example. So we have here, we have the set of x as an element of k, where x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. Now what we can tell about this, x can be 0, so 0 can be our greatest lower bound, which is the term for it, and it is also our minimal element, because it is included in the set. One over here we have, it is the lowest upper bound. And this is how you define them, the upper bound, because it's the smallest we can have, so it's the lowest upper bound. But we do not have a maximal element. So we have zero as the greatest lower bound and the minimal element, because it is included in the set with the equals there. And we have 1 as the least upper bound, because it's the, it blocks it in, and it, there is no maximal element, because there is no equals, so we can't, it can't be in the set.